The Red Blanket by Eliza Thomas, illustrated by Joe Cepeda. Once there was a red blanket, folded neatly on a shelf in a children's store. For many months, it lay there, almost forgotten. It was the perfect size for a small child. I lived with my dog, Lily, a few miles from town. Apple trees grew in my front yard and there was a pond across the road. The house was filled with pictures to look at, books to read, and even a beautiful piano I played every day. But still, it felt empty. I loved Lily and she went everywhere with me. Still, I felt a little lonely. I was sad that I had no children. One evening, I was sitting on the back porch with Lily. Somewhere, a little girl is waiting for a mommy, I thought. There must be a way to bring us together. I rubbed Lily's soft ears and thought late into the night. The next morning, I called an adoption agency. I sent letters far and wide. Then I waited. Deep snows fell, then melted into a muddy spring. I dreamed about my baby. Summer came and went, and the mornings grew crisp and cool. I longed to see my baby's face, to hold my baby's hand in mine. There were tiny apples on the trees in the yard when at last a letter arrived. My hands were trembling as I opened the envelope. Inside was a small photograph, a baby girl with the shining eyes and a thatch of black hair. The letter told me her name was Pan Pan. She lived in an orphanage on the outskirts of a city in China. Please come soon, the letter said. Yes, I was so excited that I jumped up and down all around the yard. Hooray, cheered our friends and neighbors. Woof, said Lily. I raced into town to the children's store. I bought diapers and baby bottles and milk formula. I bought white t-shirts and yellow pants, striped pajamas and tiny green socks. I found a rattle and a little brown bear. What else will my baby need, I wondered anxiously. Then, just as I was about to leave the store, I noticed the blanket, all alone on a high shelf. I took it down. I'd like to buy this too, I told the store clerk. At home, I packed everything into my suitcase, folding the red blanket carefully in a corner. I was ready to go. I brought Lily to a friend's house and kissed her goodbye. Be a good dog, I said. Lily looked worried. I'll be back soon with Pan Pan, you'll see. I kissed her again and she wagged her tail. Then I went to the airport, boarded an enormous plane and flew all the way across the ocean. After I arrived in China, I traveled on smaller planes, then trains, buses, and taxi cabs. Two days and three nights later, I reached the orphanage. The square building was surrounded by a stone wall set in the middle of rice fields. The director welcomed me at the gate and led me up the wide steps. Inside the nursery, the caretakers lifted a baby from a cot where three others lay sleeping. This is Pan Pan, they said. At last, I held you in my arms. Hello, my sweet girl, I said. Though you were small and thin, you were very strong. I smiled at you, but you wouldn't be my gaze, and you squirmed while I thanked the caretakers. She's a very good baby, they said. I know, I said. The directors waved goodbye and I carried you to the waiting taxi. When we reached our hotel room, I showed you the view of the city. You wriggled in my arms again and I pulled you closer. This is new for me too, I said. I've never been here before, either. I pointed to the rooftops and the wide river below. I described the fields and apple trees back home and I told you all about Lily. We'll be there soon. I said as I walked you inside, but you weren't listening. Instead, you looked around the room at the chair, the bed, the bureau, the curtains, the lamp, and the clock on the table. You looked everywhere but at me. Everything in your life was different now. Where was your cot? Where were the other babies? Where were your caretakers? And who was this new person carrying you around and pointing at things? You wriggled and squirmed and kicked your skinny little feet, and then you began to cry. All day long, I tried to comfort you. I gave you the milk formula. I showed you the rattle and the bear. You were hungry for the milk, but you pushed the toys away. I dressed you in the new clothes, but the pants and socks were too big and you shook them off. I walked you back and forth, singing all the sweet lullabies I could remember, but they were unfamiliar melodies and you couldn't understand the words. Nothing I did consoled you. You cried and cried until I felt like weeping too. 
and by evening time we were both very tired. I laid you down, bent to kiss you. You just turned your face away. Finally, I remembered the red blanket. I rummaged through the suitcase and found it tucked inside. How soft it was, how beautiful. Gently, I spread it over your shoulders. It was the perfect size for you. This will keep you warm, I whispered. This will keep you safe. I snuggled under the soft blanket. I used a little corner of it to wipe away your tears. You had stopped crying. Then you reached up and I felt your tiny hand touch mine. Mother and daughter, we held on tight. A few days later, we traveled home. Our friends and neighbors met us at the door. Welcome home, everyone cheered. Woof, said Lily. I carried you, bundled in the blanket, all around the house. Here's our kitchen, I said, and here's the living room and the piano. And look outside. I pointed, apples, we will pick some tomorrow. Then I showed you your room. Together we looked at everything, the chair, the rug, the bureau, the curtains, the lamp, and the clock on the table. We looked at your crib, piled high with stuffed animals and toys that friends had brought for you. We looked at each other, and then we smiled. I love you, I said. We were very tired. We were very happy. Now this house is filled with pictures you have drawn and books we've read together and a beautiful piano we play every day. It no longer feels empty. As I look at you sitting at the kitchen table, I can hardly believe how much you have grown. You climb the apple trees and race around the yard with Lily. You have a new bike on the porch. You have a new thick quilt on your bed. But every night, I still pull up the little red blanket as I hug and kiss you goodnight. Sweet dreams, my darling. I love you very much. I say, you are the best thing that ever happened to me. I know, you say. I love you too. And every morning, you bundle the blanket under your arm before you go out to play. When we take a weekend trip, it's the first thing you pack. You carry it with you everywhere. It's special, you explain, if anyone asks. The blanket is worn and faded by now, and some people think it's just a raggedy piece of cloth, but we know better, you and I. It will always be special. It will always be beautiful. It will always be the soft red blanket I brought you long ago on that magical day when we first became a family.